Curtis Anton Basita is an anti-abortion terrorist who's bombed multiple abortion clinics in the past. And he's held up as this hero in the pro-life movement. Well, now they're going to have to answer for their hero doing this. He spent 12 years in prison for four abortion clinic bombings. Now 58-year-old Curtis Basita could be heading back behind bars, this time for first-degree child molestation. Basita has become a martyr for the anti-abortion movement. Back in the 80s, he was a frequent picketer outside the Feminist Women's Health Center in Everett. He set three nighttime fires there in 1983 and 84, forcing the clinic to close. He also was convicted of arson at a Bellingham clinic. He'd call about every six months or so, so it was kind of like he touch base. John Mitchell is a high school teacher for the Snohomish School District and has known Vesita for 40 years. It was like a switch went off or something. Where he says everything changed when the bomber got out of prison. I would say he's definitely got some disconnect with how maybe how his actions affect other people. I don't think he sees the world through the same eyes he used to. He calls Vesita sick as opposed to evil, but still wouldn't trust his children around the man. After that, he wasn't all here. It was as if he was hearing voices, and that was kind of scary. Scary, creepy, odd, these are also some of the words character witnesses have used this past week in court documents describing the 58-year-old. These surveillance pictures are from inside the Snohomish Fred Meyer last Tuesday, where detectives believe Basita made sexual advances to an 11-year-old girl. The young victim says Basita pushed himself against her, touched her backside, and whispered in her ear. She says he, quote, was trying to do something bad by making her leave the store. Now there's a $250,000 warrant and Pasita is nowhere to be found. And still at this hour, nowhere to be found. Now we pulled these court documents which show that eight different people identified him in that surveillance video. Now since he's been released from prison, Pasita has had three misdemeanor charges and he's also had a mental health evaluation. Sounds like some liberal bullshit to me. Looks like the hippies are going after him. This is a conspiracy right here. Yeah, no. So let me give you this guy's rap sheet. In 1984, Basita was convicted by a federal jury of arson. He set three separate fires at an Everett women's clinic. He also set a fire in a clinic in Bellingham. He served 12 years for those crimes. During the time he was in prison, he was, quote, held up by the anti-abortion movement as a martyr. They honored him in absentia at a national banquet in 1995, reading a letter he wrote from prison to attendees. Stay classy, guys. In 1996, Basita was released from prison. Uh, short of his 20-year conviction. In 1997, Basita was sent back to prison for parole violations. In 2003, Basita was released from prison again. In 2004, Basita was accused of attempted arson in Snohomish. At that time, prosecutors believed Basita posed a grave concern for public safety. They ordered a mental health evaluation. Basita was found not guilty at the arson trial, but in 2004 and 2005, Basita was convicted of first-degree trespass for incidents at the Immaculate Conception Church in Everett. He was banned from the church grounds, but did not serve any time. In 2010, Basita was arrested for harassment in uh, Payela. He was convicted of fourth-degree assault and sent to a state mental hospital. He was relieved, uh, I'm sorry, released the following year and was monitored by the state until late 2011. And he told the court he was still receiving mental health treatment during that period. And now he sexually assaulted and molested an 11-year-old. They have it on tape uh, from the security cameras, and there's also about nine witnesses. So, go ahead, pro-lifers. Defend. See, here's the thing, man. This is what uh, drives me crazy. Is that this guy thinks he is actually some sort of moral superior. The pro-life movement thinks he's some sort of moral superior. Like, they have the high ground and they've been right all along, and especially when it comes to the issue of abortion and this and that. Like, oh, yeah, we know what we're talking about. Really? Really? Because I question your judgment based on this stuff right here. And the problem is, when you define yourself as moral by definition, then it's, it's, it's free reign to do whatever the fuck you want. Because you've already concluded that your actions don't matter because by definition you are moral. It's the same thing that we, saw, we see with, you know, imperialist countries.
and, you know, oh, let's go wage war over here and let's go wage war over there. And we can do it because we know we're, we're doing what's moral and what's just and what's right because we are the good guys by definition. We're just spreading the values that are superior to everybody around the world, so it's actually us being altruistic. This is how you spin it in your head. Your actions don't matter. It doesn't matter that you killed civilians because it was in the service of good. Same thing with this, oh, no, no, it doesn't matter that I'm molesting little kids and uh, trespassing on private property and burning clinics down, because I know I'm moral and I am right and, my, and I am just by definition. So my actions are irrelevant. That is a very, very dangerous way to think, and that's a very primitive, pathetic, irrational, silly belief system.